Should be a good fight. Both pro debuts, though, so uh, we'll see what they do with the new weapons. Remember, uh, from amateurs now, they can kick to the head, they can knee to the head, as well as elbow. So uh, that's a big game changer in a lot of the situations. You're looking at Steve Jones, who fights out of Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Ryan Hogan's his opponent, hails from Holding, Ohio. Jones looks at Rashad Evans as his favorite fighter. Guys, if you're influenced by anybody, well, it's not a bad one to be influenced by. Let's say that first and foremost. But how does that carry over to a guy like Jones? Do you often see that? I mean, sometimes guys really want to be who they like and be like a fighter who they grew up emulating. Not always the case, but if Rashad Evans is someone that he looks up to style-wise, what would we expect to see out of Steve? I'd expect to see athleticism, quickness, all-around game, but definitely uh, good wrestling, good grappling, control. That's exactly what I would have said. All right, so Steve enters the ring right now. He's our first fighter in. Ryan Hogan's will be next, a jiu-jitsu specialist. That's part of the description that we've gotten on Ryan as he makes his pro debut. He was out here really, really early checking out the cage, checking out the surroundings, getting the lay of the land. One of the first fighters we saw in the building. And as uh, you pointed out, Brian, he's a five-time amateur champ. Yeah, you, you can't um, underestimate all of that experience. I mean, it's, it's uh, going to play a big part here. And since I'm a, an MMA, a mixed martial arts nerd, I noticed that Steve Jones, when he came into the cage, he came in like Rashad Evans. That was a Rashad Evans entrance? That's right, yeah. All right, so Hogan's, as we said, tends to rely on jiu-jitsu. Kind of interesting. I don't know what he wrote here, but when the fighters do their pre-fight interviews and give us some notes to work off of, especially the guys that have not been seen before, he wrote a really, really long description of how he thought the fight was going to go, and then he scribbled it all out and wrote nothing after that. So I don't know what to make of that. I don't know if, to, I don't know if that's to psych us out or if that's to psych himself up or to psych out the opponent or what, but... Uh, it could be to psych us out. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are, Ryan Hogan's and Steve Jones. A little bit of a reach advantage for Jones, but we've seen so far a couple times on the evening, whether it be the amateur ranks or the pro ranks, where uh, maybe the reach advantage, you, you think it's going to be something and it doesn't turn out to be anything. In this case, they're so evenly matched, it probably wouldn't matter at all. But Jones will start off round one. Uh, we're in the black shorts. Jones just had to, uh, looks like the commission asked him to remove an ankle wrap. Um, we'll see if that plays a part. He doesn't look too bothered by it, but when you've been warming up with an ankle wrap and now it's off, it's a, you know, change in temperature for your foot and a change in how it feels. Mentality, yeah. I mean, if you train nothing, you know, with ankle wraps, you know, that might play a fact in here. It could. Yeah. Also wearing black shorts coming into the ring right now, Ryan Hogan's. Ron Gillette Incorporated is going to bring you round one. We're going to go into the cage right now with Dan Bogan. Ladies and gentlemen, our next event is a featherweight event in the professional division calling for three five-minute rounds. First, we have fighting out of the blue corner, standing five feet, eight inches tall. He weighs in at 146 pounds. He has a 68-inch reach. He's making his pro debut. He represents Malice MMA from Paulding, Ohio, Ryan Hogan's. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing five feet, nine inches tall. He weighs 145 pounds with a 69-inch reach. Also making his professional debut this evening from Demco MMA. He's from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, Mr. Steve Jones. Guys, what knowledge, if any, do you have of Al Malice MMA or Demco MMA? Not, not much, Tim, but I, um, just upon further review of my notes, was noticing for Hogan's, if he's out of Ohio and he has an 8-7 and seven amateur record and he's fought that many times in Ohio, Ohio has different amateur rules. You're allowed ground and pound. You're allowed basically professional rules in Ohio in the amateurs. That could play a big part here for him. It's a little bit sharper coming into his professional debut then. Sharper and used to, used to uh, strikes coming at him on the ground. Jones goes right oh, to take wow. him to the ground and does so quickly and effectively. 
I'm not surprised. I've had a chance to see uh, the Wrecking Crew, Steve Jones, Steve Mowry, some of those guys from Wrecking Crew at different tournaments in the area. They, they come, they're tenacious. <laughs> they fight hard. Jones wants to win this fight by KO. I think he's going to try to do it through You're ground and pound. He immediately wanted to take that down. It was a good takedown, good setup. Yeah, he, he really came, came out like a bat out of hell there. <laughs> but Jones showing a lot of speed early. Right here is where, where I was mentioning that Hogan's would, would have the experience in Ohio coming up in the amateur ranks uh, of the ground and pound. Jones employing an interesting style of stand up here, very dangerous. He, he exactly. clearly has no respect for Hogan. Uh, Hogan's power, Hogan's stand-up. He looks like Rashad Evans. That's what, it, that's what he's he's uh, trying to mimic here. Sort of mugging at Hogan's. Ryan Hogan's looks like former boxing champ Kelly Pavlik, so if he can employ some, <laughs> some good boxing there, get through that showboating, but he, he's back on the oh, ground. Big arm bar. That's deep. Slammed on the right shoulder from Jones. See, Hogan's maintaining, maintaining his composure through those punches. Another drop, and Hogan's kicks out. Jones is only going to be able to pick him up so many times. Right. That's going to take a toll on you after a while. If Hogan's can weather the storm, Steve, pace yourself. equalize things a little bit, get, it, get Jones a little bit more tired, um, it's going to be hard for Jones to just keep picking him up and slamming him out of that. He's going to have to employ some different techniques to escape. Jones with the red wrap on the gloves, Hogan's with the blue. Look for Hogan's uh, to possibly utilize some knees. Jones really rushing in, dropping his head down with his arms wide open. If Hogan's times that right, he could land some knees coming in. Both fighters have their hands real well. Yeah, they do. Me being a striker, I, I say no to that. Right now. Absolutely, so, no yeah. That. Keep your hands up. Especially, you know, pro debuts, hot, hot dog, and there's really no no place. My amateur fighters, they better keep their hands up. Yeah. Oh. Big head kick by Hogan. That's why you want to keep him up. Jones shaking his head like it didn't matter, and you know what that tells me? What do you think, Adam? It mattered. Yeah, it mattered. <laughs> I'll chime in on that one. That's usually what it means. That does protest too much. Hogan's not following it up, but definitely showing Jones that um, he's got those weapons in his arsenal. Oh, absolutely. This is the first fight we've seen where there's been this little action and feeling out in the first round so far tonight here at Stage AE. This is normally what a pro fight looks like. You get those five minutes. You don't want to just, you know, put everything out on the line in the first round. Guys, there's a there's a really big red mark and welt there on Jones's leg. I, if Hogan's employs these kicks, um, you know, a little bit more judiciously and and, uh, and I, continues to use them. He can't from the ground now, but if he would continue. Well, this action is taking front up. of us right now, right in front of the turnbuckle. We try to look around here. Jones goes to work and starts to pound and Hogan's on the ground. Now Hogan's gets back up again. The last two times Hogan went down, he threw that Superman punch. So if I was Hogan, I would hold back on that. Try to sit down more on my jab, but keep my hands up, because anything can happen. When you go pros, you got knees, you got legs. And that time, Jones just went straight in for the double. It doesn't seem like uh, Hogan's really working a whole lot of game plan as far as stopping his shots. Jones' explosiveness is just hard to deal with. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to deal with explosiveness, a guy the same height. Steve Jones is taller, he's got more reach, he can employ that reach to, to keep distance and then explode forward when he wants to. It's keeping, Ho Ho um, keeping Hogan's kind of back on his heels. Hogan's a bit of a red mark developing on the right side of his face. Jones is, uh, he's working a decent game plan right now. He's keeping his hands in the right position, keeping him down, definitely being the aggressor in the fight. He's gonna get the points in this round. Jones feels very comfortable. If I'm, if I'm his corner, however, I'm very with a very strong and stern voice telling him to keep his hands up Absolutely. when he comes out for the next round. 
because it these guys are professional fighters they will hit you and you will get knocked out do you find that to be of the events we've seen so far tonight the first time we've really seen the two fighters stand up and try to strategize on their on their feet as opposed to it seemed like there's a lot of thinking going on on the ground in the first few fights that we saw tonight well yeah absolutely the uh you get in a pro division, man, you've got to be smart. You've got to sit down. You've got to th think a lot of things through. Uh, you only got two minutes. You just got to go for it. But, uh, Jones, Jones coach in the corner, guys, was screaming at, at him to keep <laughs> his hands up. He's still doing it. And actually, Hogan's corner doing exactly the same thing right now. Yeah. And we saw a few moments ago um, the right kick to the head. They might have glanced a little bit more than we thought, but it still got him. Yeah. And I think that goes to the point that you were bringing up before, Brian. Getting yeah. set for round two here. Again, Ryan Hogan's with the blue gloves on, the blue wrap around the gloves, fighting out of the blue corner and the red corner gloves. That's Steve Jones. Hogan's the one with the tattoos. More tattoos. Trying to make a move and Jones backs out of it. Looked like he was going for that Superman punch again. Nice snap kick, Anderson Silva style. Hogan's almost smiling at Jones like he's, he, he finds Jones' style interesting, but isn't sure how to quite get all the colors together on that Rubik's Cube just yet. Did you guys get a clear winner, you think, in round one? Oh, definitely Jones. Definitely Jones, Jones. won that yeah. round for sure. 10-9? Yep, takedowns, takedowns, takedowns. It's such a big issue, and you're in one of the biggest wrestling areas in the country. Western PA, Eastern Ohio. Look at how he caught the kick, took him straight down. I, I was just about to say, Adam, legendary MMA fighter Boss Rutten always tells people not to just throw single kicks, if at all possible. Hogan's kept throwing single kick after single kick not setting anything up at all. Right. So it's, it's no surprise that, you know, he's going to get a kick caught and end up on his back. Don't mean to quote, never back down, but this is mixed martial arts. you got to mix it up. <laughs> when you're making your pro debut, if you're so new coming out of the amateur ranks, as a couple of the fighters that we've seen so far are tonight here at Stage AE, how far down the line is proper sequencing, or is that something you should have by now as you enter the pro? division oh you should as far as uh, you know what you're supposed to do in there I mean you need to have everything already planned out ready to go if uh, you know your training needs to be a little bit longer than you would be if you were fighting amateurs um, you know for me I'm, I'm down to fighting maybe two or three times a year now as opposed to what I was before I was fighting up to six seven times a year as an amateur you just you need more time to train you got to have everything ready to go when you get inside that cage and, and fundamentals are always key, no matter what. I mean, it, it, you know, what do you think Bill Buckner thinks about fundamentals when a ground ball rolls under his, <laughs> you know, rolls between his legs? Got to get your glove down in the dirt. You got to keep your hands up. There are fundamentals that um, at the pro level, I can assure you, somebody will check the chin of either one of these guys if they keep their hands down like that. You know what would be great is if somewhere in Idaho, Bill Buckner's sitting around saying, you know what, I could watch an MMA fight tonight and no one's going to bring up the era <laughs> in 1986. It's absolutely <laughs> impossible. That would never, oh, thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> I brought up Rubik's Cube, too. Apparently, I've got the 80s on the brain. <laughs> Just this is a, a Madonna song lyric you want to drop in here at any point? <laughs> Technically, this is their... Both of their professional fights, they're, you know, like a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. So again, Jones looking to be the aggressor, and as we pointed out, when you look at the rules, that is something that the judges are to be looking for, is who's pushing the tempo of the fight, and that has been Jones so far. Is part of this Hogan's maybe rope-a-doping a bit, or is that too dangerous to do in MMA? Well, you're in the middle of the uh, second round now. I mean, you should start, if you had something like that, you need to start letting it loose. Um, Referee Chip Snyder standing them up now. Jogans was going for a submission a little bit ago. I'm not seeing any submission game yeah. really from Jones. When he does have control, I'm not seeing. Well, that, that that's what I'm seeing. Jones, it looks like he's just trying to, oh, big kick. He may have caught the Jones. Head. Right back to the takedown. 
Another fundamental mistake there, you know, from the stand-up perspective, Teddy Atlas, you'll hear him talk a lot of times in boxing. When you hurt a guy, don't run in and smother yourself. Leave yourself a little space. Right. And we get a tap from the triangle. That didn't even look on. It, was, it must have it must have got the right angle on it. I suppose it doesn't matter if you smother your punches when you land the submission, though. <laughs> yeah, so that Teddy Atlas didn't deal with much in the boxing Apparently world. Apparently so. not. <laughs> well, there you go. There's your winner, Ryan Hogan's, after Steve Jones taps out for submission. And Jones kind of looks stunned that he had to, but he definitely had to. And we'll take another look at how this transpired. It was the kick that set it up, boys. Right there. Jones, again, goes for the, uh, the takedown, but he may have been rocked here. Just wasn't aware. He was sitting down and then uh, immediately hit that triangle. Didn't look too tight, but uh, he pulled on the head pretty well. Va Valco withstood uh, a triangle like that uh, previously, and unfortunately Jones was not able to withstand it. So even though Jones was dictating the tempo, it's Hogan's that gets the victory here. Right. This is why we're fans of MMA. I look like a dope when I'm talking about rushing in on your punches and then there's Hogan's, he lands a submission. <laughs> I have heard Teddy Atlas say that. I'll back you up on that <laughs> frequently. You. I think the last time I saw him work in a fight, I heard him talking about that. So I know where you're coming from, and it makes perfect sense in the boxing world yeah. when you get the ground game. And you know, I was about to say, that, to your point, how well Jones had been doing when he had to be taken down. He would take Hogan's right down with him and even the thing back out on the mat. But as it turns out, Hogan's had that perfectly set up. Let's go to Dan right now, he's in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, your official decision, the match came to an end via tap out at four minutes and two seconds of round two by the triangle choke for your winner, fighting out of the blue corner, Ryan Hogan's. Now let's go to Katie O'Malley, who will interview Ryan Hogan's. Thank you very much, Tim. Ryan Hogan's with a victory and a professional debut. Talk us through that fight tonight. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I've watched numerous amounts of his videos. Been trying, you know, I, I had five amateur titles and won all five of them off my back. So it was, you know, wasn't very smart of him to take me down and put me in my comfort zone, but I was ready for whatever he had to throw at me. I've been training super hard. Once you got him into that triangle, were you expecting a submission? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about transitioning into a triangle, or a, a transition from triangle into arm bar. And I heard my corner, my coach Rob Majors, I heard him tell him that, you know, he was about to tap. So I just sunk it in and squeezed as hard as I could. In addition to your coaches, is there anybody in the house or watching tonight you'd like to thank, give a shout yeah, out to? Uh, of course, my, my trainer, uh, Rob Majors, the owner of Malice MMA, my other corner, Brandon Antoine. Thank you guys so much for coming out. And I also want to give a huge shout out for, I, we got three boys fighting up town, or upstairs from Northwest Ohio from the demolition fight team. So I want to you know, wish them good luck tonight. All right, good luck to you, congratulations. Thanks. Tim, back to you. All right, Katie, thanks a bunch. We've got another pro fight coming up next. Healy and Smith, this one should be good. Plenty more action to come as we continue with Gladiators of the Cage, North Shore rise to power three.